So, oh, um, in case you haven't realized yet, I record the lectures and I put them on YouTube where I consistently get one, uh, one view per day. This is turning into a commercial. Can we, can we stop now? So, uh, what, did, what, what happened? There were two days of hurricane. Uh, I just want to talk a little math at some point. Um, so I made a little video where I went into web assign on Moodle and Gradescope and show you how those things work if you need it. What is the name of the lectures on YouTube? Uh, I don't know. You look for my name. Let me copy the link for you real quick. You look. You look for my name. And I made a playlist. And And then it's a link, I think. So now you can play that and listen to Wednesday's lecture, uh, Tuesday's lecture, while you listen to today's lecture. That, that could be a fun experience. So to anyone who had then come on Tuesday, which I think, I think I see names I didn't see last time. You can see, you can catch the old lecture on, on there. Um, you can also you know, see the video I made uh, showing all the other stuff. Uh, and today, I, before I talk about math, I still feel like I should talk about the syllabus, only to let you ask questions. So, so let's talk about the syllabus. Let's look at the syllabus. So, um, all right. So I already introduced myself and my says um, my office hours. So my office hours are happening on this Zoom room. Um, and they're, oh, I updated them on Moodle, but not here. For Mondays from 8.30 to 9.30, right after class, Thursdays 10 to 11, and, and Wednesdays uh, 10 30 to 11:30. 30. but if those hours don't work to you you can still email me and make an appointment and we can talk um all right so this is called one as you probably know the first thing i need to talk about is the the alex test which i think you should have should have all taken but if you haven't you're super you you need to take it to be in this class and you need to have 76 percent on it um you take it online i think they were planning to not do it online and then this happened so um take it don't do it with help don't cheat um because if you take that test and you cheat and you're in this class and you shouldn't then you're gonna have a very bad time or if you are in this class and you shouldn't and you pass, then you're just gonna have an even worse time in the next class you take. So the, the Alex test is, um, I never looked at it, but it's a test on pre-calculus. So functions, string, algebra, all the stuff that supposedly comes before this class. Um, all right. So the the lectures are here. I don't know what else to say about this. Yeah, I know what, what I have to say about this. So um, the lectures. So making videos, but they're not good. I mean, you you can tell they're not good. Um, they're only like what you should be getting about the, uh, from this is that you can ask questions and that you know. Basically, that you can participate. Um, so, if you, you know, normally, normally, normally years, I'm just I'm teaching in a class, and 
believe it or not, I'm talking, uh, and when I'm talking about math, sometimes I notice that I say a thing, and then I look at a room, and I see a bunch of blank faces, and then I know, oh shit, nobody understood the word I just said. Let me let me just repeat that. Let me say it a different way. And generally, eventually, people get it when I say something confusing, which happens. I mean, this is we're learning complicated things here. Um, not supposed to learn everything the first try. Uh, here online, the best I can do is look at, I don't know, I can say a thing and then I can look at a list of names and I go, oh, Joshua has his phone off still. So, um, yes, I am. Welcome. So, I mean, I'm not going to, even if you all turn your cameras on, which you don't have to, and um, maybe if I don't know, if the meeting starts breaking, I'm gonna have to ask ask you to turn them off if the internet can handle it. But I mean, even if you know, uh, even if I look at your faces, I'm not gonna be able to tell what I'm what I'm saying. Is that if you're confused by something I'm saying, what you should definitely do is speak up, interrupt me. Um, you can type in the chat, um, but there's a chance I don't see the chat because I, notification is hard to see or impossible to see. Um, so what you should really keep in your mind is that you should definitely feel free to speak up in class and ask your questions because if you're when you're confused about something, normally. Um, Normally, most people are confused about the same thing as well. So you shouldn't be embarrassed to ask questions. You shouldn't be embarrassed to answer questions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna try to ask you a lot of questions, and you should answer. And a lot of the questions I ask, I expect you to not know the answer, but I expect you to give it your your best guess. You learn a lot more from giving long answers than right answers. So. How do you learn math? Um, have you ever like you ever like watch video recipes, and then if, maybe 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 some of you are people who just like watch cooking on YouTube and have never cooked a thing in your lives, and you think I'm definitely a cook. Um, if that's the case, then what happens is the moment you step foot into the kitchen. I don't know, maybe you set it on fire. Uh, hopefully you don't. But, um, you don't, nobody, nobody becomes a cook by um, watching cooking or reading about cooking. You become a cook by cooking shit and probably burning some stuff. Fire makes the food taste better, that's true. Um, and math, I mean, math and basically everything in life is, uh, is like that. You learn it by by doing, which is why you get homework, and which is why I ask questions in class. But somehow, you're not just watching me do a thing. You that's like that's really not valuable compared to yourself doing things. Like you you sit there and you watch me do a problem, and and the worst part is it all seems to make perfect sense. You go, oh yeah, well. Um, I could definitely do this on my own. And then, well, if you don't do it on your own, if you don't try to do it on your own, you're just like, you're super happy with yourself. You go, I understood that problem. Uh, of you, you read a solution to a problem, which it's easy for you to do. Your textbook is full of solutions. And, and you read it and everything makes sense. And you go, all right, I now know how to do that problem. And that's, um, oh, my videos again. That's some BS. That's not how it works. Um, once you actually hide all the books from yourself and you do a problem, that's when you know how to do it. Or at least if you try to do the problem and then been stuck at it for hours, and then you look at the solution, then you actually get a lot more than just looking at a problem than creating a solution instantly. Why is my email open? Okay, so um, oh wow, I'm looking at the wrong screen. Okay, 
Uh, next topic. Webassign. So I think the vast majority of you have made it into Webassign, but anyway, that's where your textbook is. It's where I'm going to give you some of the homework. So uh, the homework there takes all problems out of your book. You can just go into it. You'll probably find the solutions in your book. Um, I mean, it's a bad idea to do that because you're not learning, but you can totally do that. Um, so they're, I mean, in there, they're graded, the computer grades them. So it only cares about your answer, which is not ideal. Um, and also, you can you can get it wrong as much as you want. Uh, I mean, you you can, I think you get 100 attempts at each question. So it's really, I mean, the goal is for you to just learn. And you, you get so many attempts that, I mean, you could get it perfectly every week um, if you put enough work. Uh, and you, you're free to ask me about the, the questions you can figure out as well. So anyway, you if you haven't bought it yet, you click this link um, here. You have some what to this in the video. Anyway, you you can get the cheapest option. That's good enough. And then you go into Moodle, and that from there you can join the class. And in Moodle, I also put the code. Okay, so you're great. Um, so your grades, so this is how your grade is made up. So 25% uh, well, is the, the Moodle homework. There's going to be some longer homework where you have to actually write solutions. That's going to be a total of 45%. Then there's 10% for participation. And there's going to be a final exam, which is 20%. Um, so, I already talked about WebAssign. I guess your lowest score is going to be dropped from WebAssign, something I haven't said. Um, so then also there's homework. Um, there's, there's going to be every two weeks, I'm going to give you um, like two or three problems. I, mean, I don't think it's very long for two weeks worth of work. Um, um, so the point of that homework is that you actually show your work somewhere. So um, you, the point, the point is that you show how you solve a problem and you explain it. Um, the solution, the, the answers there are worth basically nothing. Like a correct answer with no explanation is not worth anything. And a good explanation with the wrong answer is probably worth a lot. Um, I guess it depends on the problem. So you're going to uh, load them on Gradescope, which I showed in the video last night. How to get into, but I noticed a lot of people are there already. So you can scan it and upload a PDF, um, or you can uh, you can take pictures with your phone as long as they're legible. I don't care. Um, if you have, I don't know, if you somehow don't, if you can do homework and somehow they're not um, they're not PDFs or um, or pictures. I don't know if you know this, but you go into Google and, for example, you know, say I had a PNG that I wanted to make into a PDF. When I want to convert a file into another, I type that into Google, and it, there's some websites and I don't know, never. As far as I know, they haven't given me a virus yet. Uh, there's also apps in your phone that do those sort of things. Um, professor told me about Lens. But never tried it. Anyway, um, so then since I don't know, a bit to force you to understand your own stuff, a bit to, a bit so I can know who I'm teaching. Um, I'm gonna. There's gonna be an oral component to the to the homework. So at some point in the semester, I guess there'll be a few of you for every assignment. 
I'm gonna ask you to meet with me for probably 15 minutes on Zoom and I'm gonna take your homework and say this problem, tell me how you solved it and we can both look at the problem. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna, it's not an exam. You don't have to come I mean, have it memorized what you did or you're not, you shouldn't be expecting uh, a quiz, you know. Uh, I'm not gonna ask you stuff that wasn't on the homework. Um, you can, you know, if you're nervous and you um, you have doubts, you stutter or something, that's not a, that's also not a problem. Um, you're not gonna get great stuff for any of those things. I just expect you to be able to explain your own work, which is a harder skill than it sounds like. Um, so if you, I don't know, if, if, you're, if this makes you nervous, which it might, I recognize that oral stuff makes people nervous. Um, you're free, you know, you're free to come to office hours and explain your homework to me and ask me, would I have gotten a point for that explanation? And I can tell you. Um, okay, are there any questions so far? Oh, there's some people with the one. Yeah, basically, just an, you know, an explanation for what you did. I mean, maybe, maybe if your homework is super well explained, uh, you won't need an that much of an explanation. But I mean, that's usually not the case. Uh, just you know, if I can ask you, how do you get from here to here? Uh, just be able to answer that question. Uh, you know, just I'm gonna pretend like I don't understand your homework, and you explain it to me. Gavin says we have to turn in a PDF of our work when we do the web assign homework. The web assign homework is just like a an online form. You just write numbers in there. There's when you do the grade scope homework, you have to turn in either a PDF or a um, or a picture, but for web assign, you don't show your work at all. You just enter the answers. You can go into web assign right now and, and see. The explanation for your homework is uploaded. Okay, I mean, answer these questions. Um, A web assign. Web assign. So a little homework. Yeah, I'm gonna do my best. But everything you can access from Moodle, which the homework I put up yesterday is not on Moodle yet. But um, so this is hopefully what your web assign looks like, and. This is inter web assign, which is not homework, but you should still do it. Uh, and it looks, this is what it looks like. You just enter your answer and click submit. I guess every time you click submit, it reloads. <clears throat> and it tells you if you did it right or wrong. So there you go. Um, and, and your first, first homework, which uh, I mean, right now it's due on Thursday. I mean, Thursday. Yeah. It might be due later because with the hurricane, I don't know if we're gonna cover enough before it's due. Maybe, maybe I'm extending this. Um, so this is your first homework on Web Assign, and your is it. You just enter the answers here. No need to show your work. Here's two answers for you. And the long form, form homework, the longer stuff is on grade scope. That is, that's where I pretend to be a student. 
So this is a student account, a student called test. Um, so you go into your course and you see here the first homework. Um, well, this is not what it looks like. This is what it looks like for, uh, this is confusing because this is what the answers look like. Anyway, you click that thing and you get a, you get a prompt to upload your answers. So this is where the, where the written homework goes. Did that answer your questions? All right. So where are we? Um, okay. uh, participation. Okay, so there's a tiny bit of your grade for participation. There's nine months doing grade scope already. Yes, 0, 0.0. Um, it's due in two weeks. Not very long. So um, you're supposed to come to lectures um, and participate. I'm not gonna. I mean, I'm not gonna be super strict. With it. I'm not gonna. Currently, I'm not planning to take attendance. Uh, but you do get a grade on that. So, was oh, I thought you said there was an assignment on grade scope. Um, it's a, it's a question. There is an assignment on grade scope already there right now. Yeah, it's uh, you have two weeks to do it. So, final exam. So, the final exam, this might be a mistake, uh, but it's not going to be proper. So you're going to get like eight hours to do it. It's not going to take you eight hours to do it. You just, you know, in case your if your internet is broken for four of those hours, then you have four hours to do it, where uh, which is still more than enough time. Um, like the homework. I'm also going to make you defend your stuff orally. So again, you don't, you're not going to get quizzed, but you're still, you're still going to have to meet me, and um, and I'm going to ask you how did you do this problem. And you know, if you don't understand your own work, then that's a problem. Well, participate. Um, Lisa asks what participating in class is, and I mean in lectures. I mean being here, asking questions, answering them, uh, homework and quizzes. I don't count as participation. That's just doing the work. So what you're doing right now is participation. Um, yeah, so the, the exam, like the homework, you're going to have to meet me and I'm going to pick some problem that you did and ask you how you did it. And I mean, it's turning your No. I, it's turning your camera on, consider participating. I know I'm not looking at your at your camera. I'm not sure who's turning the camera on right now. If I if I show your cameras on my screen, I stop knowing. Uh, I stop. It, it covers up all my screen. But if if you turn your microphone on and you ask the things you're confused about, that is being that is participating. Are we being graded on the completion of our homework? If we get all the questions right, you're graded on getting the questions right, and and the work. The work is more important than the questions, right? Like when I see a solution that is like the work is correct, you had all the correct ideas, and then you made a sign error, and then you got the wrong answer. Normally, I give full points to such a thing if the if the error is very small, or I give almost full points if the error is not as small. But when I see a solution that makes no sense and then the correct answer is there normally i give a zero to that um and well that's on the on the homework on the written homework that i'm grading on web assign you just 
you can see your score as you're doing it um, at the top of your homework. So there you just need to get the answers right. What you really need to do is to learn. That's the that's the point of web assign. Yes. I mean, you have buttons there to help you do the homework. Okay, more questions? What? Beeps? There's so many beeps everywhere. Okay. Uh, final, so that's, um, that's the final exam. Um, so by the way, this, uh, how to upload your stuff to Gradescope. I did that yesterday on the video that I recorded towards the last three minutes. Um, it's, I mean, maybe you can look at it and then ask me if you're still confused. Since uh, for that account, I already uploaded homework. I don't know how to do it again. I mean, I can modify what's there, but it doesn't look the same. But I did it on video yesterday. So okay, so with the uh, with this, um, yeah, microphone, I think. Lisa. No, no microphone. So um, with these oral discussions i'm not gonna surprise you by the way i'm just gonna maybe ask you a week in advance what time works for you and we can set a time so it's, i'm not gonna you should also not be worried that all of a sudden i'm gonna jump on you and say right now getting to zoom and explain your homework to me um okay so the letter grades um so this has to be very confusing to people. So there, there is a curve, there could be a curve. That kind of depends on how grades turn out. So if you, what does this mean? It means that if you get 80%, then you're here, here. You have at least a B minus. So depending on how your numerical grades are distributed, I'm going to try to stick to historical grade distributions. Which I have here. Um, so last year in this course, about 5% of students got an A plus, 13 got an A, 9 got an A minus. I'm going to try to stick to something like that. So if by raising your letter grades, I can stick to something like that better, I'm gonna do it. And if I would have to lower them, then I won't lower them. So the answer is, is there a curve? There is a curve if it's if it works in your favor. If it doesn't work in your favor, then the scale is this one. Um, which means that until the very end, I can't really tell you your letter grade. Um, at some point, maybe I will give you a guess for where you stand, but it doesn't really mean anything. I tell you, you have a B in October, that doesn't prevent you from having a, a D in December, even if your grades don't, if your grades don't change, if everyone else all of a sudden gets better. Um, okay, I'm sure there's gonna be questions about this, maybe not right now, but I know, I know, how things go. Um, so, okay, so how to contact me? So you can ask math questions on Piazza. You can email me. I don't like answering math on email. It doesn't really work. Also, if you ask on Piazza, then everyone sees your answer. It could be helpful to more, more people. It's easier to write math on Piazza. You can also shoot be asking me questions in office hours. That is, I think the most valuable thing you have at your disposal. Um, you can contact me for anything else. You can write me on email. You can write me on Moodle, which reaches my email anyway. I don't know what else to say about that. Moving on, uh, cheating. Okay, so 
there's I mean there's a whole academic integrity page here. Um, basically, basically anything you use, and this is not this class, this is just everywhere, um, you have to cite all your sources. So if you, you know, you're welcome to use the book for your homework, but you're supposed to say using this thing from the book, you can, in your homework, you can talk to your peers. Um, but then, uh, you know, if they say, you know, try writing the thing this way, then you should say, oh, Miles suggested that I try this thing this way. Um, yeah, you go, so you can work in groups, you can say, you know, me and I'm, I'm saying Miles because you're the last person to talk. Me and Miles did the question together. And and then you know you're not gonna. You, it's not like I'm gonna. You know you can get full points for doing it like that. Uh, what is a problem is if two people have an identical answer and there's no reason why. Then I'm gonna think you cheated. Um, and that is cheating. And you know I mean you still have to do your work. You can't get a tutor to do your work for you you can't just i mean i don't think you're gonna find the problems on the internet unless you ask someone uh, you can't get someone on the internet to do the things for you if you you know if you found a similar thing on the internet and you go like oh this helped me that i think is valid um except in the exam in the exam you're supposed to do your own work um and and that's it you can't get any outside help you you have to do your work by yourself. I think I said you can use a textbook in the exam, um, but it's an exam. You can't use any help, and use, using it is cheating, and you can get into trouble for that. All right, we're almost done. Um, so I'm not gonna. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna tolerate uh, any sort of discrimination or any sort of shit in general among each other. Uh, I don't know, this would apply more in an in-person class. Um, I don't know how you would manage to be shady to each other. But if you if you somehow manage, uh, we'll stop to that. And that's it, I'm not gonna go through this. This is a list of what stuff is in the course. Um, it's also, if you want to look at it more in detail with like the chapter numbers, you can go here. It's interesting. This is pretty, this is pretty interesting because it says here you see things like um, remember, students don't understand the chain rule read yet, like with your mind as you're moving through the course. All right. Um, that's it. That's it. Now we can actually start the class. Are there any questions? I'm going to take that as a no. So, um, okay. So I'm going to start. I'm going to start in chapter one. The course doesn't start in chapter one, the course starts in chapter two. Um, chapter one is calculus um so that means it's review it's stuff that in principle i mean in principle you've learned at some point in your life um maybe it was a summer ago and then you've forgotten everything about it uh, hopefully your memory will come back normally it does maybe if we're very unlucky maybe the last time you saw a math course was three years ago in high school and you're going to have some trouble remembering. Hopefully, hopefully you will get there. Your your memory will come back. But anyway, this is so. This is a refresher. I'm going to go too fast through this stuff for you to learn it. Or if you're seeing it for the first time, um, just a heads up. So 
what is what is this course about? So most of calculus is about functions. And what is a function? Um, so a function. So what? Maybe I just want to write. I'm still like trying to figure out how this works. A function is um, a way, a way, or a rule that assigns something in a set to. I don't know. Uh, a function is something. So a function is is a rule. You tell it. Um, you give it a thing. It gives you something else. For example, if a, a function, no, oh, is super vague, but I guess it's very vague. Um, there's a lot of things that could be functions. For example. For example. Uh, You don't want to write. Uh, um, uh, for every person in the class, uh, there's a function. There's a function that to every person assigns their name. So I give, uh, if I give this function, um, it's uh, a person, it gives me the name. So any, any sort of rule or process or machine where I give it a thing and it returns an answer, um is a is a function so let me oh, what am i doing let me do more examples um another example what's another example um to every there's a function there's a function that for every piece of furniture in this room it returns the price i paid for it might be zero so it's kind of like um, I, I ask the question about something and it gives me the answer. You quickly explain the difference between f, f of x and y. Well, yeah, I'll get there. Well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not there yet, though. Um, what's another function? Um, oof, mine is super blank. Uh, this time, okay, maybe I'll move on. So, what is so? These are not the kind of functions that we're going to particularly care about um, in in calculus. Maybe in other places we do. In in calculus, um, we mostly care about functions involving numbers. Involving numbers. So what's uh, such a, for example, for example, um, the function, the function that for any number you give it, adds one to it. 
So, um, so this is what a function is. Um, it's honestly, I don't know if I'm being super vague and confusing or not, honestly, but it's, it's a very, it's a, it's a very abstract, very general thing, which uh, is kind of what makes it useful. Basically, any sort of rule, any sort of process, any sort of machine that you feed a number to and then gives you another number, that's a function. Even if you also, if you gave it, you know, 23 numbers and it returned you 54 numbers, that would also be a function. Um, not the kind you see in Calc 1. But still a function. So, um, yeah. Wait, so you, yeah. you basically saying it's like an equation uh, that takes an input and gives you an output. So that's an that's a function, um, but it doesn't have to be an equation. It's kind of one of the things I'm trying to get at. So, okay. Where the hell? I have so many, so many devices everywhere. I lost the pen. Here's the pen. Oh, that's just great. Ah. So, um, by the way, this function that I just wrote. Is a number that takes x and then it gives me the number x plus one. So some functions I can give with a formula. Um, and some other functions, some functions you can't, for example. Um, if um, I don't know, for every so there's another function that for every x it gives me uh, even or odd. So um, so that. Maybe you can write a formula for. Maybe maybe you can't. Maybe um, you will be able to. I don't know. Maybe you learn this at some point in your life. But the point is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have a formula for. You can still be a function if you um, if you don't have a formula. So there's a lot of ways to represent a function, um, especially a function of numbers. <laughs> With that i have a question yeah so uh in the first function x plus one so uh in any case it would uh, uh, whatever number you put in there you'd always add one to it mm -hmm. but in uh the second one you're saying that uh even or odd would depend on what number you put in there i'm just saying this is a function you tell me a number and i give you i tell you even or odd so you say five i say odd you say zero i say even Okay, so it would depend on the input. Right. Yeah, that's what that's the point. You, it's anything, anything where there's an input, and the output depends on the input. So, okay. uh, so if you're looking at Jamboard, um, I just moved to the next slide. Um, so I can think of a function. As a, I can think of a function as a machine. Right. Um, so basically, there's a There's um, there's something here, and it has a funnel. 
um, in goes the number four, and out comes the number 8.5. And maybe, uh, maybe you know what happens in between, maybe you don't. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe you know it better than, uh, better for some functions than others. Uh, for example, if you ever, if you've ever been six years old and you've seen a magician uh, tell you, think of a number, let's do it right now. Um, think of a number, add three to it, then multiply by two, then subtract one, and then tell me the answer. I got 11. So here 11, so here 11 is the output, and the, what the magician is telling me to do is telling me to do that's the function. So you sort of um, so you have your machine. It goes um, add three, then multiply by two, then subtract one, then. Uh, and then you get a number. Do I get 11? So this is a function. Of course, this is, I mean, drawing machines with funnels coming in, up, in and out of them is not the most convenient way to give a function. Like, sometimes you can give a formula. So um, what does it, so to give a formula, I take so I I need to take the input and I mean I can't say it's three because it might not be three um, right to the function is not is not the part that involves the three the function is this whole thing. So what I need to do is give the input a name, um, give the input a name and use that name uh, throughout. So uh, normally, I mean, the most, most common thing we like to do is call it X. But we don't have to call it X. Um, let's call it X for now. So then F of X, so what does this mean? This means uh, f applied to x applied to x for the result of doing f to f to x. So f of x equals equals um oh, but so if i take x and i do the function to it what i'm supposed to do is take x at three and then multiply by two and then subtract one so so this is um a very convenient way to represent this function but let me be clear um this sentence, oops, I can't tell me a line. And this stuff here, and this formula, these are all the same. These are all the same function because a function is not referring to a representation or a formula. It's referring to the, the act of you telling me three and me telling you 11. These 
are all the same function. What time is this? Oops. All right, so that's going to be almost it. Maybe just to say goodbye, let's let me ask you a question. It would be sad if I left without asking you a question. So I'm going to ask you to write an example of a function. It could be involving numbers. So go in the chat and write an example, and I'm going to make you all hit enter at once. Um, Create an example of a function. It doesn't have to uh, doesn't have to involve numbers. Um, has to be so. Um, just any example of a function. I hope you're writing. I'm doing that too. But uh, let's see if it works. All right. All right. I was going to tell you. Um, ooh, all right. So count of three, everyone click enter. Hopefully you got somewhere. Oh, you all click. All right. One, two, three. Uh, all right. Let's see. Y equals f of minus x. I don't have enough time to go through this. I don't think, I mean, this could be a function, but maybe I'm, I'm going to. Copy and copy this and talk about this on Monday. Okay. Um, see you on Monday. You can stick around and ask questions, but also you're free to leave. Um, I have one quick question. Yeah. So we are still like, I haven't taken pre-calculus since like junior year, but a function for every input, there's only one output.